good morning, everybody. It's me, fresh out of bed in all my glory. Acne and all. Red hair and all. Sans makeup. Pajamas. I didn't even brush my hair for this one. Why? Because I don't have to measure up to anyone but me. We set our expectations for who and what we're going to be in this life. Oftentimes those expectations are impressed upon us and we don't even realize they've been impressed upon us by the perceptions, positions, choices, actions of others, of the culture we grew up in, traumas we endured at the hands of other people, the way that people literally defined us, and the way that our particular culture, society, family defines good quality, worthwhile. When you look at a baby, everybody thinks, wow, they could be president. This life is a blank slate. It is a canvas waiting for you to use your imagination and paint on it. And then that baby starts to grow up in this little petri dish that it has been put into your family of origin, your socioeconomic status, your country or nation, uh, religious spiritual belief systems, um, and then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the messages are delivered and input and then situations and conditions happen, health conditions, um, uh, actions of others, um, trying to navigate a system um, of social injustices uh, that are prevalent in the society that already existed in this petri dish. And they're like bumpers in a maze. So you get downloaded, this baby gets downloaded before it's old enough to really understand the broader schema of life with all these messages about what it is to be a good human, what it is to be worthwhile and good enough and, and lead a good, good life. And they're also placed in this little maze where there's all these bumper guards, like in bowling, where you just bounce off. <laughs> and there's situations beyond our control. There are society, there are, are inequities, uh, socioeconomic, gender, um, sexuality, uh, disability. The list goes on and on of our little unspoken caste system, perhaps depending on where you're born, you were born into a caste system. We get placed and everyone's point of view of their placement of their worth is different because everybody's nation, station, family of origin, etc. is different. So when we're old enough to realize we have agency, which is the capacity to have a prefrontal cortex that is starting to develop. It finishes somewhere around our mid-twenties that allows us to make larger, broader choices. We begin to strive against all these walls we've been bumping into and thrusting, been thrust from, um, that have come in upon us in this maze that's been laid out of society, of obstacles, of traumas of 
who and what you're supposed to do with your time, who, who you're supposed to be to be good enough in your given society, in your family, um, in your life. We begin to strive with those messages to achieve, to do the right things, the right things, <clears throat> to show up in a certain way, to behave in a certain way, to say certain things, to um, achieve certain levels, to define success, happiness, fulfillment, worth, and the quality of who we are based on achieving these little checking off the boxes that were put upon us and internalized, We're trying to prove that we're good enough, that we're worthwhile by we're trying to, to live the dream and being in America, uh, living the American dream. Finland has shown to be the happiest nation on earth in the most recent happiness study. Um, and uh, they're more living the American dream than Americans are. The American dream itself is the American dream. Different cultures define things differently, and if you don't fit in that little box, um, if we were in hunter-gatherer times, instinctually we don't want to be ostracized, we don't want to be left out, uh, because the one that was left out would die. So we have this in deep, deep physiologic and instinctual need to be accepted in the group. So we take on board all this stuff and we try to become good enough. We try to live the American dream, the European dream, the African dream, the whatever, little girls, keep their legs crossed, they're demure, they're proper, they don't speak out, they don't have confidence, they don't play sports and fix cars, little boys don't sew and play with dolls. We learn to become and chase after messages that really when they get broken down because everyone's is different is an illusion this striving for what you've been told what you've been programmed just by f frequent random chance of who your parents were where you were born and the other things that came flying into your life, the experiences that were beyond your control, and what all of those people say we're supposed to do, we're supposed to be in given situations and supposed to go after. You spend your childhood and adolescence until you're about 20 something, maybe 30 something, becoming usually to the best of your ability what you've been told to be and you're always left with this lingering instinctual undertow in you that something is off and also this inherent sense that you're not good enough you're not worthwhile you're you're not a good person unique, valuable, wonderful person. You're not living up to the expectations. You're constantly chasing those expectations. And you never reach enough. You might get a, a moment of relief when you reach one. And you've, you've checked off that box. You fit in this box. You've measured up. You've measured up. 
but that doesn't last very long before you have to measure up somewhere else. And we do this to ourselves and we become someone somewhere in this maze that isn't who we truly are. We become what we were told to be to the best of our ability. And then we spend our thirties unbecoming. <laughs> well, I'm pretty unbecoming right now. Uh, I already showed you my zip. Genuine authenticity, um, unbecoming everything we became when we realize, wait a second, I'm living someone else's life. I don't feel very good about what I'm doing who I am, where I'm at. Something is wrong, something is wrong. All of this messaging was just messaging. I don't have to live up to anyone's expectations of my own, but my own. What What's programming, what's not? What, you know, you become this person and then you have to deconstruct it <laughs> and try to figure out what the roots are beneath the tree and start constructing what you want to paint on your canvas. And you realize that by the time you realized it, that you were this baby that could have become president, you might have lupus. You might be in ordinary poverty and homeless. You might have suffered great traumas and are emotionally suffering, physically suffering, um, tangibly suffering. You might not have the means or tools or skills to become yourself. But the gift wherever you're left by the time you're between 20 and 30 of after trying to trying to do what you're supposed to do or rebelling against what you're supposed to do and becoming someone you're not and trying to get your validation and self-esteem from outside and you realize it's all bullshit it's all fake it's all an illusion no one defines you but you and you deconstruct all this stuff the gift is realizing you have agency. The gift is realizing that this life is a blank canvas. Yes, we, it, there's a saying that it's not the, uh, something about the crayons, the, the picture you make with the crayons that you're given. We're not all given the same opportunities. We're not all given the same um, abilities. We're not all um, forced to go through the same traumas. We're not all in the same situation. We're not all going to be able to reach whatever. But try to define your goals and your success and your fulfillment and your happiness and especially yourself. Whatever it is you're trying to paint on your canvas by your own definition. What would be fulfilling and contented in here to you? You don't have to measure up to anybody. I showed up fresh fresh out of bed to make this video because I don't have to measure up. There's nothing that you have to be, nothing you have to become, nothing you have to do to be good and good enough, worthwhile, lovable. You are the gift. You are the dream. You are that baby who's like, wow, I could have been president. We can't all be president. Some people are refugees right now in a refugee camp. And boy, me in a, a house with fresh running water and citizenship and living like a king by comparison. My trials and tribulations are menial, despite that I've been through some pretty severe things. By comparison, try not to compare. 
when you wake up, whenever that is, teens if you're super lucky, 20s, 30s, 40s, some people never do wake up. Take a look around you, realize where you're standing. Whatever got you there, that's you are where you are where you are with what you have and in the condition and constitution that you're in right now. You got the crayons you got, you got the paints you got, but looking forward is still a blank canvas. Do the best you can with what you have to make something that is for you. To be someone that you design. To live a life that you design within the constraints that you have. Not to try to reach the American dream. You reach your dream. And you know who comes up with the dream? You do. Out of your imagination. Just like when we were kids and we colored a picture. Our actions within the constraints of this maze that we are in. When we are free and we drop all that messaging and we deprogram ourselves as much as possible and realize how much agency we have. It's like a pick a path book. The choice is yours. Go where you want to go. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Say what you want to say. Live how you want to live. Dream what you want to dream. Chase what you want to chase. Don't chase what you don't want to chase. And just be free. And you're like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Click those heels together. You've had the power all along to change your life, to be happier, to start moving toward things that would be more fulfilling, contenting, stabilizing, to, to learn skills, to cope, to move past traumas, to uh, reintegrate into where you are now and decide where you want to go. Um, it's like magic. That moment is like magic when you wake up and realize that it doesn't matter to anyone but you yourself me myself and I who I am how I spend my time what I value and prioritize what I look like how I talk how I act how I show up in the world and what I do today tomorrow and the next Yes, we have impact on each other, and hopefully, as you become more aware, um, that becomes a priority of yours, but I can't make you um, care about other people. You'll learn, eventually, <laughs> how important that is. Um, but uh, self-esteem self-esteem. Have you ever noticed how old people just don't give up anymore? Um, about what people think about them. Try not to wait till you're at the end of your life to learn this lesson. To wake up don't spend your life living someone else's life, chasing um, after whatever to be good enough, never feeling like you are good enough, always seeking that mark, that checkbox of reaching a goal or success or fitting into some synopsis of what a, a good and successful person is in your culture and faith and family, etc. Um, beating yourself into submission. Because you'll end up looking back and you've missed your whole life. All the things you might want to do, want to see, want to be, how you want to show up in the world. Um, and you never, you never did it. You checked off a lot of boxes that mattered to everybody else and what didn't matter to you. And all along you had the choice 
to make different choices, to make your own choices, to decide how you want to be, how you want to dress, how you want to act. It's like the second adolescence when we go through the phase where we're dyeing our hair all black and walking around in trench coats and trying to rebel against the system. Um, except it's a more intelligent way of doing it. Um, when you realize life is a canvas, you are an artist. You hold the paintbrush, you hold the power in your own life to paint what you want to paint. We don't have the same paints and some of us have broken down brushes. Those things are out of our control. But you can still paint a pretty damn good picture. Doesn't matter if no one else likes it. It's your life. You only get one. You only get one opportunity to paint this picture. You paint your own picture of who you want to be. How you want to live. You're already good enough. You're already good enough. You are already good enough. Quote of the day. Took me a long time to get here. I'm meandering because I literally honestly did just this is how I'm showing up in the world today. 100% uh, just me. Just me. Um, quote of the day. Self-confidence is when you realize that you are the dream. These things we chase, these marks we try to reach, they don't matter. You make your own. Decide for yourself. Be who you want to be. Behave, believe, act, prioritize what's important to you. Show up how you want to show up. And if you're not sure how to do that or what that is, then that's your new job. Deciding how you want to show up. Who am I? Really? But really understand. You don't have to measure up to anybody. The definition of good is your own. You are already worthwhile, valuable, and good enough. You are the creator of your own life. It's in your hands. You're in your hands. You are good enough. Right now, you were yesterday, you were two weeks ago, you were before you ever hit any mark. Doesn't matter if you don't hit any mark. Doesn't matter if you live in a box. Doesn't matter what you own. Just try not to hurt anybody. <laughs> Do the best you can to be the best version of yourself as you've defined it and decided it to be. Stop trying to chase other people's lives and stop trying to feel good about yourself by proving you are good enough. You were good enough the day you were born. You'll be good enough the day you die. And that dash in the middle, you're still good enough regardless what you filled it with. Okay? Self-confidence is the day you realize that you are the dream. I'm gone on long enough. I probably could have made a better video with this quote, but uh, I'm, I've been staying at my boyfriend's for a week, and so um, that's why there's been a lot of door filming, <laughs> um, and uh, I'm a little behind on the videos, so um, that's okay. I don't need to measure up. 
good morning, goodbye. Self-esteem comes from in here. And it comes because you are. And you have the power to move mountains with your choices. It's really quite magical. You are really quite magical. Powerful, resilient, creative. You'll figure it out, hopefully. The sooner the better. I'm not talking about ego. I'm talking about legitimate self-worth and self-esteem. It comes the moment you realize that you are that dream. You yourself, you are good enough. Always have been, always will be. Set yourself.